Weird Science is the revolution. Hello, you weirdos. Jim here. And I have mentioned before, if you have come to the channel and watched a couple of our shows, that I was told that comic book reviews do not work on YouTube. And as you can see from the channel, I don't listen because I'm a dummy. But I also was told that indie stuff or the non big two stuff, those reviews really don't work. So, of course, here I am to review Geiger number one because, you know, again, I'm a dummy and I don't listen. It's weird to say that Geiger is independent, that this ghost machine stuff, I mean, the idea that it is its own thing, ghost machine, but also being distributed by image. That's kind of like the big two and a half, right? They're just about as big. And and the way things are going, I am looking forward to this ghost machine stuff as kind of a savior for me of, you know, a couple more things to read. It's not a mistake that when I talk to people about the big things that they're reading nowadays, a lot of the stuff isn't the big two. You end up having, say, a Conan or also the Transformers, Energon, G.I. Joe, all that stuff. Instead of, you know, the usual suspects like Spider-Man, Batman, where people are down with it. So I think that Geiger and the whole ghost machine stuff from Jeff Johns is coming out at the right time. And so here we go. That's the intro. Here we go with the review. It is Geiger number one, written by Jeff Johns with art by Gary Frank, colors by Brad Anderson, letters by Rob Lay. And one of the things that I wanted to figure out going into this first issue is, is this good to jump onto? Is this good for newer readers, people who haven't read the past Geiger stuff? Now, me personally, I have read about half of it. I did not end up finishing the stuff before, so that's kind of what I was hoping in a selfish way. Can I just jump into this? And I'll tell you that right now, if you are somebody wondering if you can just jump into this, I would say maybe read the little bit in the Ghost Machine one shot, but then you could jump in even without that. You can jump into this. Jeff Johns ends up using a couple cliches, playing with that idea of Westerns, but also just epic stories. There's even kind of a meta thing going on in this issue with Westerns. But what he does is he uses the cliches as a way to get people up to speed And then gets beyond them to go forward in it. I actually thought at one point and actually was afraid, oh, we're just doing that again. But we really aren't. So as we go in, I will read the little bit of recap, the little bit of intro here. A devoted husband and father, Tariq Geiger, was stricken by a debilitating cancer. Oh, my goodness. Desperate to be there for his family, Tariq fought the disease as hard as he could. When the mysterious conflict known as the Unknown War erupted and the bombs fell, Tariq was caught in the fallout and transformed into the Glowing Man. After discovering the family did not survive, this nuclear nomad walks the irradiated desert looking for an excuse to share his rage with evildoers he deems deserving. Debilitating is the word galuli. So we jumped into this and you have what I said, a little bit of a cliched kind of start but that's kind of a smart play and i think that jeff johns he has that sort of i think what the germans say je ne sais quoi right that's what the germans say he has a way of telling a story that does get you up to speed through dialogue through actions not just narration and i think that that really is the way that you can get into something a little more organically it starts with 20 years from now this is the whole connected deal And you see a run downtown, very much like an old Western, but we know that this is in the future and that this is an irradiated post-apocalyptic Earth. You end up having some, you know, thugs roll into town. And it's the idea that you've seen in something like Bugs Life or movies like The Unforgiven, things where the thugs come into town. Hey, do you have your tribute? You know, I, we come here every year. We come here this amount of time. And you better have this stuff. Oh, you don't have it? Well, we're going to take it out of you. We're going to grab the kids. We're going to do all this. Well, while that's happening, you end up having Tariq Geiger. He is just watching what is going on. He's actually just like on a porch reading a Western novel and seemed as if at this point he may not even get involved until, you know, these thugs go a little too far. 
and grab his book, start taunting him. We do end up seeing the first glimpse there of his two-headed dog, Barney, and they mess with the wrong guy. They mess with the wrong guy who just kind of wanted to mind his own business. But you end up having him get triggered by this, and boom, he turns into the glowing man. And I love the way that the storytelling here goes where we first see the glowing man. We don't see him initially beating the crap out of people. We actually see the aftermath of it. And one of the crazy things is this one thug with just his face with a burning handprint. And it really does show you a bit of, okay, he, this isn't just, you know, a light show. He is irradiated. He is the glowing man. And then you get a little bit where this one thug grabs a young kid. And you do end up seeing that Geiger, the glowing man, kind of looks and sees his own son in this and ends up taking down this guy in a vicious, vicious way. But it's a cool way to set up the character, a cool way to set up, you know, a little bit of the power set and what it means. Now, in that, I said I was I was worried that this was going to just devolve into that cliche of, oh, my God, the glowing man, can we hire you to protect our village because we're ending up. Hopper keeps sending his guys here and taking the no, that doesn't happen. And it really does continue to show a little bit of character work, but also world building where this town, they're petrified. Oh, my God, that's the glowing man. Don't get near him grabbing the kids. And it does give you that aspect of a hero who really isn't loved or wanted. He has just saved them. Now, it may screw them down the line. You know, that sort of thing usually does happen. That's why they usually hire the person like this. But they are afraid and like, you know, we don't want any parts of you. We didn't know that you were the glowing man when you came into town. And he just kind of changes back into his regular Tyreek Geiger self and picks up the book and leaves a little dejected. He, He just saved the town and they want him gone. They're petrified of him, including the little kids. And it kind of gets to him. Kind of is that idea of reminding him, oh, yeah, you know, this is a screwed up world. <laughs> I am screwed here and it sucks, but he still does the right thing. That's what makes him a hero. And he leaves with his dog and they go off. And again, you're going to get a bit of, you know, the world building. And I'm not going to say even world building, maybe world recap, getting newer readers, especially up to speed where. He's going to eat and feed his dog and say, oh, you know, we can't eat meat. I know that meat's meat and the two-headed dog's got to eat, but we have to eat these beans. They're safe. And all that just kind of ties in. Again, it's a really good way of getting people up to speed in an issue. Well, we did see a guy in knight's armor watching in the village as you had Geiger leave the village. And... That guy kind of comes in where he is trying to find the glowing man. He's trying to find Geiger, and obviously he's seen him, so he trails him. He takes off to where this, you know, little place where Geiger has set up camp with the dog. And when he gets there, Geiger and the dog are not there. And he's like, huh, this is because they kind of know that he's tailing them. But again, somebody who's trying to get to Geiger, that's not good. Like that has happened. That will continue to happen. Usually these people want to take him down. So he is going to be on the defensive slash then offensive where he takes down this knight. And his name is Nate. Nate the knight. He's the nuclear knight is what he gets called by the end. Well, we find out that this guy, he just wants to be like Geiger. He wants to be like the glowing man. He ended up being somebody from Las Vegas who in the past had seen Geiger come in and take down some bad guys. And so he decided to change his life, a little quest for himself where he's going to go and find and team up with the glowing man slash Geiger to be a better person, to be able to fight some bad people and not be a piece of crap that he was. And when he gets to him, Geiger doesn't want this. He doesn't want anybody to be around him and tells him, you don't want to be like me. You don't want to end up being like me. I'm terrible i'm i'm a cancer on this world and it's kind of that play uh but you get a little bit again more kind of intro into this where you do have this nate say you don't understand i've been helping you every time you turn into the glowing man you kind of blip on the radar of the government 
And of course, they're after you. They're trying to take you down. So that's when they're able to find you. But I ran off. Like, Reese, I ran off and blew up some nuclear waste to kind of screw up their radar. So I actually am already teamed up with you. You didn't even know. But it's a smart way to show then that, yes, the government is actively trying to take out and find Geiger. And that, you know, that sets up and it also shows how they can track him. So it's a pretty smart way. But they track him. They're able to find him. And boom, suddenly they are attacked by the government and we get more action. And this is more full out action where glowing man versus the military you end up having barney the two at a dog he goes to town while you have nate the nuclear knight watch and just say he's absolutely glorious oh my god it's so great and again you see and are told by at least what nate thinks and what we go by that the government is a little sus they're not the good guys here geiger is so you see this fight and yeah the glowing man is able to take care of these guys and that's where also you have nate say well we we could team up and also by the way there's a guy there's another glowing man that there's another guy out and they found a cure for him they actually found a cure for what is wrong with you and geiger kind of takes this as you know bullcrap that is nonsense that that there's nothing that is a rumor Passed down a whisper down the lane, wrapped up in an enigma. I'm not going to deal with that. You need to get away from me. You need him. And go with the idea, too. Remember, he was sad because the villagers, don't get near him. You're going to get, you end up having this Nate. He just wants to be near him. But that's not something that Geiger's used to. So he's pushing him away and says, just don't waste your time, you know, trying to find any point in this world. Just go back to what you were doing. Just be yourself. Just get out of here. Stop it. Stop this nonsense. And you do see that Nate takes that a little hard to the point where he is going to just fall on his sword uh, and is saved. Then by Geiger, who then says, you know, I I think that the problem is he goes, I just meant go back home. I didn't mean to, you know, throw yourself there. Uh, So he kind of says, all right, you know, why don't what, what else does he have to do? Come on, nuclear Nate, let's go and find this cure. Pretty cool. Now, in the meantime, you do get a flashback to show Geiger's family, show that at, at the point where they were, him and his wife were renewing their vows, you see his cute little kids, and the dialogue is very good, very accurate for little kids. And it's one of those where he's remembering, you know, not just the good time of, oh, that's when we renewed the vows, but he remembers. His son kind of being pissed off about it. He has their dog. He has the little daughter is cute. Uh, And just to remind us, yeah, he really doesn't have anything. This was all sparked by a flower that he saw. And and like that idea of a flower being, you know, the hope that's growing. One little bit of hope growing in this crazy post-apocalyptic nonsense world. But again, that little hope reminds him of what he misses the most. So it's kind of a... You know, a personal thing, but gives you the idea of what he's gone through, a little of the stakes there. And I thought it was really well done. The art is great. The art's great throughout this. But yeah, after he saves Nate, the knight, he ends up saying, like, let's go and see where we can, you know, find this cure. Almost going off, not even believing it himself. But then at the very end, we get a cliffhanger that shows that somebody else is going around. Somebody else has some wacky powers and it is somebody hunting them down so we have a quest i like that we have western feel which fits you played the cliches to get everybody up to speed all that i thought it was very very well done i'm wondering and i'd like to hear from people watching this if you are a fan of geiger and have read all of what came before this maybe this is a little bit slower a start than you might have wanted or expected, but I think that that is a place so we can get everybody involved because this ghost machine seems like a bigger thing. And like I said, coming at a point when, you know, I review a lot of comics each and every week, mostly the big two, and a lot of people are getting frustrated, me included, with the quality of what we've been getting and then going off and looking for other things, whether it be indie stuff, whether it be manga back issues, whatever, I think that this plays a really cool and fills that crack there that people would want. And I expect that a lot of people will enjoy this. And there's two other 
Ghost Machine books that came out this week. Those are full out number ones, new stuff. I'll be reviewing those on the channel too. So I hope that by the end of this, I hope that people are interested in seeing first off comic reviews because <laughs> that's what I like doing. That's my favorite thing in the world. Uh, but also maybe some other things besides the big two because I'm kind of getting in that point where people are, and this, this happens. I, I've actually reviewed, written, reviewed comics since 2013 and have done a podcast since 2015 kind of newer to youtube so that might surprise some people but i'm getting to the point and this has happened so many times along the way where you get in that little you know lull you know we're not at the peaks we're in the valleys here and people start to question me oh don't you like anything or why do you even review these things i review things in the peaks and the valleys but sometimes i get a little frustrated when we're Kind of stuck in the valley I kind of want to get to the peaks And it seems the peaks are somewhere else Not always just the big two So so overall I'm going to give this An 8.5 out of 10 I really think the art is great I do think that the story Is starting off a little slower But again this is something that I think Is by design to get people on board Get people a little more up to speed But I'm glad that it was done Naturally, as you're setting up a new story, not just narration, narration, narration. That always drives me nuts. But let me know what you think about all that. All that in general, maybe even suggest some things that you would like to see reviewed as well, because I'm just here to throw the reviews out. If people like them, keep doing them. So let me know what you think of Geiger, the whole Ghost Machine deal, current comics, whatever, in the comments below. And I will see you there and talk to you later. Weird science is the revolution.